Welcome back as we continue working on our Imperial Star Destroyer. Today we're going to be adding lights to the engines. To start with, you will want a 3mm drill bit and a pin vise. We are going to be drilling out the three primary engines by hand, and we're going to do it by hand to ensure that we get it centered and uh, vertical for perfect alignment of the LED behind it. After that, we'll mess with the Dremel. After we've drilled out the three holes, you'll want to take your hobby knife here and clean up the remnants around the edge. You'll want to make sure that you get a nice clean hole with nothing else on the engine cone. Don't be afraid if you take a little bit of extra paint off, as you can always touch up the paint prior to adding a gloss coat. After finishing the th three primary engines, we turn our attention to the four secondary engines. We'll be using a pin vise and a 2mm drill bit in order to clear a hole for the 2mm fiber optic to poke its head through. We use the pin vise once again so we can make sure that we have a centered location on the engine. If need be, feel free to use your index finger to help align it and guide it. The advantages of doing it by hand far outweigh the speed saved by using a Dremel. Now we're going to use the 2mm fiber optic to test fit it to ensure that it fits through. If it doesn't, feel free to use the drill bit to expand the hole slightly, either by drilling or by working it up and down. Up next, we'll turn our attention to the inside face of the engine. We're going to be using about a 5mm drill bit to drill out the rear of the three primary engines and a 3mm uh, to drill out the inside of the four secondary engines. After you drill out the spaces, feel free to use your hobby knife just to clean up the edges. We don't want anything sharp that's going to cut any wires or any fiber optic filaments inside the ship. With the three primary engines done, I'll use a 3mm drill bit for the four secondary engines. And it's the same concept here of just drilling through just slightly. You don't want to go too far and mar the front of the engines so really you can do it by feel or you can decide to put a marker on your drill bit to know how far in you want to drill all we're trying to do is open the rear of the engines up so you can feed the fiber optic or the led through you'll probably find some pieces of plastic that get stuck between the two faces the easy way to clean that out is just use your drill bit to push it out through and ensure then that you have a clear path for the fiber optic to go through. Same can be done for the engine cones as well. And with that complete, you can see all seven holes are clean and ready for the addition of lighting. Now we'll move our attention on to soldering leads onto the LEDs. First, we make sure they're orientated the same way, so we know which way is positive and which way is negative. Then we'll cut off the extra length on the LED itself. We're going to want to tin each of our wires, which involves heating it up with the soldering gun, and then melting the solder directly to the wire. This is different than melting the solder directly from the pin onto the wire, as the wire is what actually melts the solder. It allows the solder to get uh, absorbed, so to speak, into the wire and provide a better connection. We'll then solder the wire onto the LED and move on to the negative side as well, where we'll repeat the same process. After the first LED is done, we'll move on, do the second, switch the two out, and then do the third and fourth. With all the leads soldered to the LEDs, you'll want to then use some heat shrink wrap in order to cover these up. This is especially important here since they will be potentially in contact with each other when you are feeding them through the engine cone. 
With the heat shrink in place, I clip the leads onto the helping hand right above the heat shrink and then use the heat gun to melt the heat shrink wrap. By doing this, I ensure that gravity is helping me keep them directly in place up against the LED. After drilling the holes for all seven engines, I recommend using a coat of gloss paint in order to reflect the light of the LEDs. With the ship and LEDs both ready, it's time to install them into the engines. We're going to be using CA glue around the edge of each LED in order to glue it directly into the engine cone. In addition, we have four 2mm fiber optic cables for the four secondary engines. It's always a good idea to test fit the fit first to ensure that there are no hiccups when it comes time to actually glue it. Just a slight band of glue along the border of the LED is all you need in order to secure it in place. Once it's in place, check from the other side to ensure that it's fully inserted and let it dry. With the three primary engines done, it's time to turn our attention to the four secondary engines. We'll be using a dab of Elmer's glue applied to the outside of each one, followed by inserting the four, four two millimeter fiber optic filament cables into the engines. This allows them to bring the glue with them as you insert it in order to create a uh, full seal and a good drying surface to keep them in place. After you have all four inserted, we're going to gather them up with a random heat shrink tube just to keep them all pointed and orientated in the same direction. This way it becomes easier to attach it to a single LED later on. Up next, we want to use a small tool that will fit inside the secondary engine in order to push the fiber optic cable back and end up having it flush with the engine. Then we can just use our finger to wipe off any excess Elmer glue for a good finish at the end of it. That should be all we need to do to light up the engines on our Imperial Star Destroyer. 